All right, so now let's go ahead and implement the auth2 functionality in our Spring Boot backend using the auth0 authorization server. So I'm going to open IntelliJ and I'm going to open the backend module, backend Maven project, and I'm going to open the pom.xml. And in here, I'm going to add a new dependency to enable auth2 capabilities in our Spring Boot application. For that, I'm just going to type alt insert and I'm going to select the option generate dependency, right? And in here, I'm going to search for Spring Boot OAuth 2, Spring Boot OAuth 2 resource. So I'm going to search for Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 resource server, and I'm going to select add. So you can see that IntelliJ has automatically added the Spring Boot Starter over to Resource Server dependency of 2.6.3. But if we go to our parent project, the YouTube clone parent project, you can see that we are using the Spring Boot Starter parent of version 2.5.2, right? So instead of overriding this 2.5.2 version with 2.6.3, what I'm going to do is just going, I'm going to remove this version. In this way, Maven will just download the Spring Boot Starter Watch Resource Server dependency of version 2.5.2, right? So if we put, if we add 2.6.3 version into the class path, this may lead to some other problems. So it's always a best practice use the same version of the starter as the parent. So just keep this in mind. So the next step is to configure the issuer URI inside our Spring Boot application. For that, I'm going to open the application.properties file under source main resources. And I'm going to add a new line and type in spring security.oauth2 and IntelliJ and in the IntelliSense is already suggesting me the values. So I'm going to mainly select the property spring security oauth2 resource server dot jwt dot issuer url so this is the url for the of oauth2 discovery document so i will and i will let you know what is discovery document shortly to find out the issuer uri i'm going to open auth0 portal under the auth0 portal go to applications click on the api client we've created before so this youtube clone spring boot api client and copy the domain information from here right open intellij and type in https and paste in the domain of your Auth0 API client instance, right? And also make sure to add the trailing slash to this issuer URI. So now let's understand what is this issuer URI. So now your Spring Boot application is configured with OAuth2, right? And what happens is whenever the front end or Angular application is sending some access tokens, so our back end will verify this access tokens against the Auth0 authorization server, right? So how our backend will understand to which service it has to make a call to verify the token, right? How it will understand? It will understand by taking the issuer URI and sub appending some standard URL path to it. Let me show you how it is done internally in Spring Boot, right? I'm just going to copy this issuer URI, open the browser, and I'm going to go to the URL, which we have already saw, dot well-known open ID configuration. So if I open this, the this link this is the discovery document and here as we saw before it contains all the links to the important um, information like what is the authorization endpoint what is the token endpoint so what is the endpoint which we can request a new token all this information is provided as a json response in this open id configuration well-known open id configuration link so we'll call it as a discovery document so spring boot internally will append this dot well-known open id configuration in the background and whenever it requires to communicate with the all zero authorization server it will use these it will get the values from this discovery document and will make the request so that's why we have to provide the issuer uri as a property while configuring our spring boot application as the oauth2 resource server hope this is clear if it is not yet clear again please go through the oauth2 tutorial i have uh, linked before in the video tutorial after adding this information the next thing we have to do is to con create the security configuration class right for that i'm going to open java package and inside the root package and inside the config package, I'm going to create a new class called as security config. And uh, this class is going to extend another class called as web security configurer adapter. 
here observe what I did here. So I did not type in the complete name web security configurer adapter, right? I just typed in WSCA. You don't need to type the whole big class name in IntelliJ. IntelliJ is smart enough to understand. If you just type the starting letters of each word, it will provide you the matches uh, it found, right? So I'm just going to select the first option, web security configurer adapter. And inside this class, I'm going to override one particular class for that I'm going to select the option alt insert and in there I'm going to select override methods and in here I'm going to configure I want to override the method configure with taking which takes in HTTP security as a, a conf, uh, as a method parameter right so I'm going to select this method and click on OK now you can see that IntelliJ automatically generated the required code so I'm just going to remove the super call. All right, so inside this configure method, we are going to first define the security configuration. So first of all, we have to make sure that all the requests which are which our backend is receiving, those should be authenticated, right? So let's uh, go ahead and define this configuration. So for that, I'm going to type in HTTP dot authorize requests, any request dot authenticated. Right, so we are making sure that all the requests, any requests we are receiving to our backend, that should be authenticated. And we are also going to make sure that our session management policy is stateless, right? As we are using the JWT token, which is a stateless way of authenticating. So we are going to make sure that um, our session management policy is stateless. So for that, I'm going to type in session management dot session creation policy creation policy dot stateless right and after that I'm going to enable the resource server capabilities in our application and we are also going to support JWT tokens for the token based authentication so I'm also going to enable that by typing dot JWT and uh, once we have configured all these details we have to now configure the JWT decoder in our application so what happens is whenever we receive a request from our Angular application, the backend will first decode this JWT and make sure that the JWT is actually valid or not. And it will also check whether the JWT is intended to us or not. So to do that, we have to create a bean called as JWT decoder. And inside this decoder, we will make this validation happen, right? So let me copy and paste some code so that it will be easy for me to explain and paste some code here. So here, um, as you can see, we are creating a bean called as JWT decoder. And inside this JWT decoder bean method, we are uh, creating the decoder from the issuer URL, from the OIDC issuer location, and we have to pass in the issuer location here, right? So how we can get the issuer location? We can read in directly the property Spring Security OAuth to Resource Server JWT Issuer URI. We can read in pro the, read in you can read this property in our class. I can do that by typing at value and from the factory dot annotation package. And in here, I'm going to provide the expression dollar and braces. This is a Spring expression language, and here I'm going to pass in the name of the property. Spring Security or to Resource Server JWT Issuer URI, and I'm going to assign this value of this property to a variable called as issuer issuer, right? And uh, the JWT decoder bean will take the issuer and it will first scan the discovery document I mentioned I've shown you before and from there it will get the location of the decoder and it will create an object of type Nimbus JWT decoder right and to this decoder we also have to provide an information about uh, the audience right so we have to provide the information to which backend to which API this this JWT is uh, intent to for intended to right so for that I have to create a new property called as odd zero dot audience and what will be the value of this audience if you remember when creating the spring boot STP spring boot client inside odd zero YouTube clone spring boot API client we have defined the identifier as HTTP localhost 8080 so this is the address of 
address where our Spring Boot backend is running, right? So this is the identifier of our API client, Spring Boot API client. I'm going to pass in this value as the auth0 audience, right? And I'm also, and now I'm going to similarly what I did for issuer. I'm going to read in the value auth zero dot audience and assign it to the vari variable audience here. Right now we will have the audience inside our class and I'm going to pass into the audience validator. So this audience validator is nothing but it will check whether the JWT contains uh, is intended to our to this particular audience we passed in or not. So for that I'm going to create a new class called as audience validator inside the config package and uh, this class as you can see is going to implement the OAuth2 token validator interface of type JWT and uh, this class should now implement the method validate and inside this method we will validate whether this JWT we are receiving contains the valid uh, contains the audience or not for that I have to first define a class level variable for audience so private final string audience and I'm going to add the constructor parameter and I'm going to assign this class level variable to the constructor to the variable inside the constructor here and now I'm going to type in JWT dot get audience dot contains audience and let's enclose this inside an if statement so if the JWT audience contains the if the JWT is intended to this particular audience then we are going to return an OAuth2 token validator result as success that means the did the the token is valid right if not we are going to return over to token validator result dot failure and inside the in, and in here we can also provide some custom error message right so for that i'm going to type in new or to error and with a message invalid token so it's not invalid token but something like invalid audience for the given token make some room here so you can see invalid audience for the given token let's go ahead to so now let's go back to the security configuration and now you can see that we have defined a uh, OAuth2 token validator for the audience validator and uh, we also have the URI and we also created another token validator with the issuer and after that we are creating a token validator called as delegating OAuth2 token validator which will pass in the issuer and as well as the audience and finally we are providing this validator to the JWT validator of the JWT decoder bean. So this is what we have to do to enable the spring enable OAuth2 inside our backend application. I'm going to start our backend application now and let's test whether this is working fine or not. All right, so now I open Postman HTTP client and right now we will just do a small test by trying to access the get video endpoint. So I'm just going to type in HTTP localhost 8080 slash API slash videos. And in here I'm going to pass in the video ID which is existing in the database. So I'm just going to type in the ID. Let's make a call and see what happens. So as you can see, we've got a 401 unauthorized exception because our backend is now expecting a JWT token inside the authorization header, right? So the first thing we have to do is to get this token. For that, I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to make a post call to Auth0 to retrieve the token. So how can I get the token? Uh, we have a very nice documentation inside the Auth0 website. So if you open the YouTube clone Spring Boot API client section, we have a, a tab called test and in here we have a curl command. So I'm just going to copy everything which is inside the data section, right? Inside the data section, whatever we have, I'm going to copy the whole body and paste it inside the Postman client. And with this body, we are going to make a request to this endpoint programming ticky euauth0.com slash oauth slash token. So I'm going to make a request to this endpoint with a post request. So if I click on send 
you can see that we have got the access token uh, which is of type bearer and uh, we also got the timeline which in which the token will be expired right so let's copy this token and go back to the tab where we have made try to made a call to the get video endpoint and in there i'm going to go to the authorization tab and select the option bearer token and provide the whole token which i've copied before and click on send and now you can see that we are able to retrieve the information about the video which we have saved before and we have enabled the oauth mechanism in our spring boot api so that's it for this video guys and in the next video we're going to see how to communicate between our angular application and as well as our spring boot application using the token based mechanism token based authentication mechanism and after that we are going to continue building out the rest of the futures so i will see you in the next video and until then happy coding techies